Eh, yeah, mine are really awful. I mean, the first voice I got come back was yours. So the first thing I wanted to talk about tonight was uh, a new tactic that we were devising in our officer meeting. Uh, we've kind of noticed that a lot of you guys have some pretty upgraded Sunderers. And um, those of you that do not have either upgraded heavy assaults or can use a fury turret. One of those three things, which is uh, pretty consistent among our outfit. So you may have also noticed that our outfit is known for our Liberator pilots and Liberator gunners in the Air Force. Uh, if you've seen on the planet side forums, User joined people your channel. talk about us having pretty, pretty scary lib pilots. People will see our, our libs and run away. So I want to take that and apply it to our battle buses. I want people to know that when NNG has an, an, an uh, fucking Sunderer line going, battle bus line, they will cower in fear and run. We will destroy enemy platoon foot zergs and just invade bases. The way that this is going to work, we're going to need four Sunderers each time we go Sunderer line. One of these Sunderers each time is going to need to be an AMS vehicle repair Sunderer. So this is something that you may want to cert into, is having the vehicle repair. All the way uh, upgraded is uh, the best option. That Sunderer is going to be the home base spawn Sunderer. It's going to have at least two engineers with full, med or full engineer repair tool in it, two burster maxes, and possibly a medic if needed. At least two burster maxes and at least two engineers in there. They're the home base. They set up and deploy behind a rock or at an area, wherever they need to set up. The three other Sunderers. One is a mine guard or blockade full User joined your Sunderer channel. with Furies or uh, Bulldogs, either option. Most, most likely a Furies is the better option. And we'll have two to three heavy assaults in the Sunderer as well as the gunners. So there'd be a total of five or six people in the Sunderer. The second Sunderer is an ammo Sunderer with, uh, you know, whatever else equipped. AA. AA. We'll have whatever uh, utility-wise equipped, and then it'll have anti-air on top of it, and we'll have either a burster max or an additional heavy assault inside inside uh two people in that sunderer as well and then the final sunderer in the back will be another blockade sunderer blockade armor sunderer which will have at least one medic one heavy assault and then two gunners the back one is going to be for the purpose of resing any people who die in the field doing the maneuvers when we have to uh use the battle buses when okay so the maneuvers for the battle buses that i'm thinking of when engaging armor user is, left your channel the battle buses will approach the armor and drive circles around it the sunderer will continue to drive circles around any piece of armor the heavy assaults will jump out of the sunderer when it is behind it and the, they will fire decimator rockets or whatever rockets at the rear of the the vehicle the sunderer will come back around pick them up they do it to the next one. We have three Sunderers, or two or three Sunderers in the field doing this. I think we can be completely changing the phase of this game. I think that people are going to be scared of how we run, and I think that it's a tactic that's not yet been tapped into. Our Mag Riders at the moment, unfortunately, have a weak spot in the rear. However, a Sunderer with blockade armor has no weak spot it's actually more defensed in the rear if you don't know this already a sunderer has no directional um, increase to damage if you hit a sunderer no matter where you hit it it will do the same amount of damage so when the blockade armor is put on it gives you at full 20 percent all around but another 25 percent at the back so the back side of the sunderer is actually more protected so this tactic is going to be used a lot more frequently. I suggest everybody in the outfit upgrade your Sunderer, um, get a Fury on top, or put anti-air on top of it. Upgrade the vehicle ammo, 
and vehicle repair uh, utility on your Sunderer. And then um, if you want to get battle buses started, but uh, if you have the Fury, invest in the extra clip ammo, not the reload time. The uh, user so this, joined this your channel. Tactic is going to be used very frequently now, and I think it might be used almost every time we go from base to base using a Sunderer line. Is this four Sunderer tactic? Um, I will make a detailed forum post about it, and I'll post it either tomorrow or the next day, and uh, we'll 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 practice it in full. But it's definitely going to be something that we're going to be starting to be get, become known for. And it's going to be something that we're going to need to... It's not going to be like uh, how the Liberators do. This is a, a platoon-wide... Platoon-wide... User joined uh, your channel. ...tactic. Not just two people in one channel. Everyone's going to have to work together and we're... You know, if the, the base Sunderer comes under attack, the three Sunderers come back to protect it. And when the three Sunderers are damaged or in the field, or if one of them is heavily damaged, the other two protect it and get it back to base where they can get repaired. Um, it's, I think it's going to rock. We're going to get a lot of great footage, and we're going to tear shit up. So that, that was uh, the first thing I really wanted to talk about. Second thing I really was uh, coming up on is talking about game night for this week is going to be Wednesday night at uh, 7.30. haven't figured out exactly what game it's going to be just yet. But we're changing the way that game night is going to work. Instead of $15 game cards for every event, we're going to have $10 game cards for the outfit wide events they're going to be from walmart so they'll give you an extra 200 and then we're going to have the 15 dollar 2000 sc walmart game cards for the outfit donator only events this way it'll encourage people to i you know head head over and donate to our plant side fund for the leadership which you know helps pay for our games the game fund and that is going to in the future help get everybody gifted in uh, in Planet Side when they allow gifting of items or uh, however that's going to work. We'll be able to get everyone in the outfit uh, what they need. Um, it goes to the community as well. If we have anything extra, it goes over to the, the team speaker of the site if they need it. Also, if you know you think anyone in the leadership's doing a really nice job, you can donate it to there and say you know. This person did an excellent job and tip to them. It's always appreciated. A lot of our officers put in a lot of work to the site. You know, effort is a lot on their scale. They eight hours a day sometimes, twelve hours a day. I've seen some of our officers on putting time into NNG. So, you know, it's much appreciated and it's nice to have that that uh the funds to 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 do the game night and to to continue that. I'd hate to cancel it just because, you know, we don't have enough to keep it going as a community. Uh, there is the $1 option to donate on on uh, PayPal, but in the end, they it only ends up being $0.67. Cents. So it will, um, a $1 donation will allow you to participate User in joined your that, channel. Week's, uh, that week's donator game, but it will only be valid for that one game. So it's kind of like a $1 ticket to participate in the donator event games because it's only going to give you 67 or put 67 cents in the donation fund. So I don't want PayPal to take our money. <laughs> uh, moving on with that, uh, that's all I really had to cover. Our outfit is, state of the outfit is really strong. Our uh, active numbers are still over 80%. We're going to also kind of install a new policy where if, you know if where we, we kind of had it whereas uh if you were a member and you were um going to be gone for more than a month where you would be uh, asked just to uh you know message me and I wouldn't kick you where we're actually going to kick you anyways <laughs> but when you come back just give me a message and I'll invite you back that way we have our active numbers percentage at its highest 
So if you you know you're gone for a month or so and you're a member to the site, don't take anything personal that you're removed from the outfit. Just when you're back, I'll send you an invite and put you back at your normal position. Um, that's all I really had to say for this evening. I'm going to turn it over to officers in alphabetical order. So they have anything they wanted to add or bring up to you guys. Uh, Ajax. Again, like I say every week, calm chatter, keep it down when we're trying to be tactical. There's a time and place to chatter and talk about camos and everything else. Otherwise, you know, good job, everyone. Benny? Uh, yeah, kind of on that note, uh, I was, we were talking about this in the officer meeting a little bit, um, but I wanted to say something about one one thing that we should be talking about on comms. Um, so, like, I often forget, um, but am reminded that in this game, because of, like, the fact that it's an MMO User and, and a first-person shooter, your channel. Uh, one of the things that makes us so good as an outfit and like gives us an advantage over p other people a lot of the time is how social we are and how that multiplies the powers of our eyes and ears like how that takes the intelligence that we individually gather as players playing you know we're pretty good about sharing you know like ooh there's a an armor column over here over there whatever you know but like we talk about that and we try to keep refining it and everything and we're pretty good at that right um but like there are still some problems with it, and so I want to address that um, in the lead in the officer meeting. I was talking more about from like the leader perspective, how when we're sitting there doing nothing, um, like the the leaders need to send out feelers, like whether literally or figuratively, they just need to be like, hey, where's the fight, guys? Like, is anybody fighting right now? Should we come send the platoon there? You know, and then we get that going. You know, and we have that, you know, we're sorting that out. Um, for for everybody who's not an officer, like, I want you to remember just that, like, our precedent is to find a fight. Like, our, our, our mission is to find a fight, rather. And, and like, you got if you see us like if you see a platoon leader sitting around like making a determination or whatever and you already know where the next fight is like feel free to speak up because we should be following that you know we should be taking your advice on that um i see a little bit of like dysfunction there you know and i just want everybody to know like you know like if somebody is leading the platoon as a follower like yeah you're supposed to be following orders and stuff but like you also do have that right to a good fight all the time that's all. Whoosh. All right. Thank you, Benny. Death Whoosh. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say... Um, User joined that, your uh, channel. We've gotten a lot of props in the forums as NNG as a whole from NC outfits, TR outfits. We do a really great job, guys. I don't know if everybody reads the forms, but we're really considered a really professional outfit, and we do a great job. And on an individual basis, we have a lot of great players as well. So I just want to let you guys know, you know, keep up the good work, and, you know, everybody gives us good props. Everybody. And that's all I have to say. Uh, building off of that, we've had people join us just based off of what other people, other outfits have said. I've seen members' applications. I applied to NNG because of what other outfits had to say about NNG. Like, our rivals love to battle us, which says a lot about... Yeah, they really, yeah, they really do. do. About what, you know... It, like, you see BWC all over our, our thing, SG, you know, we get a lot of love from other outfits, and it's it's actually kind of important to reciprocate it and know that, you know, they, they are our enemy, but they're people too, and a lot of the times, they're just other gaming communities of really nice people. You know, shoot them in the game, but you don't have to be a dick to them in person. <laughs> Hope you're not talking about the Enclave. Maybe, no, except no, us. No. Not talking yeah. about the Zergclave. Um, moving on, uh, Gavald. User joined your channel. Now I was just going to mention the keeping the chatter down as well. Uh, we have been doing better channel. on it, I've noticed. Uh, like, even if someone says, you know, clear comms, I got something to say, 
normally, you know, we weren't doing too well at that. There's a bit of lingering sentences. But lately, I have noticed it has been getting better. Um, even non-officers that say, hey, clear comms, I notice a lot more people just instantly, you know, shut up and listen. Um, so good job on that. Keep it up. All right, excellent. Uh, seal? I do not. Okay. Um, I actually had one thing I wanted to add just really quick, and you might have already seen this on the site. If you haven't, uh, give me one second. Put in the link in the chat message now. There you go. That That's the link to the forum post about Meet the Officers, which shows you, if you don't know who these people are with the Blue Shield, they're the officers. They... Uh, each have some designated roles. Um, they're outlined there. So if you ever have any questions or looking for something in the outfit and don't know which officer to turn to or don't know exactly what kind of leadership is around here, that forum post lays it out very well. And if you have any questions about becoming an officer or want to apply to an op become an officer or uh, want to step up to that position, uh, message me or check out that thread. Um, the positions there are basically like the job positions that I have available. So, that being said, uh, Caliph? Everyone else already said what I wanted to say. Kuwa? Uh, nothing at the moment. No Obama? I, um, you like flying. I don't bite. Feel free to join me. Flying channels, kill blobs. Plato. Plato, do you have anything you want to add? Zia. I have nothing to add. Okay. All right, at this time, I'm going to open it up to general questions from any uh, new members, people that don't have a green shield next to their name in TeamSpeak. If you guys have any questions that you want answered or just have anything you're wondering or about, uh, just put it on up. Um, yeah, I have one thing. What's up? Um, so I, am like, made an application. User disconnected from the channel. Should I just wait for, like, an email or something, or what? We I'm actually wrong? have a reply on that on the forums. Make mm, sure you introduce okay. yourself when you, uh, start a question, too. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, Mr. Pie Guy. Um, my in-game name is just Mr. Pie. Hi. Glad to have you with us. And Hi, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about your recruitment, Caliph is our recruitment or other recruitment officer on the site. He'll be able to help you. What's his name? So yell at him. It's the Caliph. He's the one that has the C and the red shield here in TeamSpeak. Okay. All right. Uh, if anyone else has anything that they want to say or have any questions that they uh, have, just uh, chime on in. Uh, put your name in first. Um, Caliborn, and I was wondering about the whole Battle Sunday line thing. What happens if we get armor rushed? If we get armor rushed, I mean, we're not. I I don't plan on taking the Battle Sunday line into say thirty prowlers. I plan on taking it in. Possibly taking on at most 10 if we get skilled enough with it. Start off with it a max of 5 maybe. Prowlers or vanguards. But it's going to be very effective because you can actually take a Sunderer at full speed and ram a lightning and destroy it. Speaking so, for experience on that one. Yeah, so you can... Uh, so the only problem with the Sunderers I'm going to see is, is probably going to be Liberators with Tank Busters or the main battle tanks with the anti-armor um, rounds. And that being the case, that's why we have the infantry in them, and we keep doing the circles around the main battle tanks, is so that the infantry can get out behind them, and they'll keep shooting the Sunderers. Those infantry will just get up behind them, throw C4 on the 
the the armorer just shoot him in the back and take him out really quickly. All right. User disconnected from your channel. I wish I was in particular. But I like North. I've got something to say. Yeah, go ahead. Just say your name first. So North. Everyone knows. Yep. Go ahead. Um, I've got three quick things to say. One is, um, Vonick took me aside after I requested some help, um, and he spent about an hour or so with me, training me, uh, answering all my questions one-on-one. -on -one. My, uh, my close quarters combat, or when I was fighting another an enemy one-on-one, -on -one, I had an embarrassingly low win. I was losing about 70 to 80% of my matches, and now I'm winning. Um, most of them with uh, about a three to one kill death ratio, one on one, or even more. That was just after one training session with him. So I'd like to thank him, and I'd like to recommend him to anybody else who wants uh, some fine tuning fighting skills. The other thing I'd like to say is uh, I haven't been able to get on the website for about a week for some reason. It's asking for me to try refreshing or looking for a live version of the site. I've donated before i'll do so again so if somebody could help me get on the website that would be appreciated and the last thing i'd like to say is um i don't think we should uh, i kind of like talking while we're waiting 10 minutes for a base to cap it gets it helps me get to know people and answer some uh, questions about the game and just makes the game more fun so i'm hoping we're not too strict on the uh the talking thing that said uh some people are pretty long <laughs> That's yeah. it. When when we're at a capture, when a base is captured, SCU is down, everyone's on point, and it seems like we've got it pretty much. We'll go to a casual comms where it can be pretty social. But, you know, that being said, the second that something does come up, it takes, you know, precedence over, precedence over what's going on. It's got to be that is more important. So, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, there's going to be a huge drop or a increase in the strictness of comms, but at the same time, like when we're assaulting a base, we're assaulting a base. And User we're disconnected trying to get points, from your like, channel. If I'm trying to get a kill, I really don't want to hear about the daily deal too much. Honestly, let's like let's get the base and then talk about how good the daily deal is for the medic or something like that. You know, on downtime, and it's, that's totally cool. And if you guys are wondering if it's really quiet, and you know, just be like. Can we have free comms now? Platoon leader will be like, yeah, it's totally cool. Just if something happens, you know, call it out. I, Always I, refer to the platoon leader at the time. I think uh, the policy is more like, if you hear a prowler is coming, you know, that means that... Because if there's one prowler coming, there's probably five more prowlers coming. That's when shit starts to get serious. So that's the, your cue to stop. So. Yep, yep. Um, other than that, North, uh, I don't know why you keep getting that issue. Um, uh, there, um, is a, there is a, there's a similar issue if he clears his cache and he clears his, uh, if he clears his offline cache, um, or you, if he's using, I can help him. I will help him. What okay. country are you from? Because we have some countries blocked because they would DDoS us. I'm from Canada, and it's happening on uh, two different IPs. I've got my work computer and my home computer, and it won't happen. And I heard a new guy trying to log on. He was saying he's having the same issues too. Hmm. All right. Well, Wait. So we'll you're you're not that. logging in from Pakistan? <laughs> no. no I'm just Iran. From, I'm from Canada too, and I just tried like ten seconds ago, and it works. Yeah, so we'll we'll have to look into that, and I'll have some of the higher level administrators look into the site logs and stuff like that, figure it out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up to us. Maxwell here. I'd like to uh, emphasize what Banu said earlier about uh, communicating uh, the general platoon, not only tactical, but general platoon feeling to uh, the platoon leader. Uh, my own recommendation is to work on the formulation if you need to communicate something other than like precise tactical information such as uh, next moves. Uh, one of the, uh, when you're leading a platoon, that's one of the toughest choice sometimes. You either have to um, 
move the platoon somewhere to ghost cap even though you you hate doing that or you move the platoon to an area with way over our head so as a fight but it's, it's important to communicate with the platoon leader uh in a manner that has a neutral tone and in the form of recommendations uh platoon leader is craving he's not he, he's not directly saying it but he's craving for recommendation all over the place so make I, I recommend that you simply use that formulation i recommend us uh, moving to a vartech plant after this the platoon leader is going to be most likely very happy to hear that because he's going to consider it and you can also communicate feelings such as uh platoon leader i feel that we have uh too big of a battle on our hands i recommend that we uh, retreat from here because sometimes when we or I hunt for fights, like, we're, we're going to be stuck in a fight that, that we simply cannot win and we're getting farmed. But at the same time, it's like the only worthwhile fight. But it's important to let, I, I think Banu is totally right about this, it's important to let the platoon leader know about these feelings, these uh, general recommendations or ideas you might have. Simply use a neutral tone in the form of recommendations and uh, I, I think it's going to help us, uh, I think it's going to help the platoon leaders How yeah, neutral of tone. Yeah, I can confirm that, guys. It's been, it's been a lot of times where, like, I know for a fact that, like, lately it's been getting really, really boring for us to play together just because of the fact. And he got stuck. <laughs> but, um... Why? It's all the facts' fault. We need, we need people to help us find those fights to make it more interesting. Like, uh, it makes our job a lot easier when we have people helping us. Of running 48 people by yourself is not an easy thing to do. Um, we rely on a lot on our squad leaders, but when it comes down to it, we're the one that gives platoon waypoint out. So we really need some help. So, especially when we're owning shit. Like, let me just stress that. Like, we we've had a lot of times lately where people fucking run from the hill, run for the hills from us. Like, and it's hard to find a fight because they're hiding from us. Like, you know, uh, and and at that point, like, we really need everybody together working to you know to smoke them out to find the terrorists in their caves so to say no literal terrorists literal <laughs> they're, fucking they're dark caves are the terrorists communists yeah. the formulation what? is is really important to have the maximum effect of it like don't 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 try to sound like a negative Nancy or something. Oh, we're gonna get killed if we don't do that, or oh, we should, we should totally do that. I don't know why. I just feel like uh, the, like the formulation really helps uh, the communication get through. Guys, remember, killing people is much more experience than waiting for the cap. You only need as many people as the number says, which is zero. Exactly. <laughs> no, that doesn't. Actually, on the other hand, up, that does. That doesn't mean that everyone should go off on their own. If you have the ability to get some somewhere quickly, or you already happen to be by something, then go ahead. If you're on point, we there still has to be some set of defense. User joined your channel. And be ready to be moved back at any time if you're called for. So. Yeah, and that you know, I'm glad that got brought up. The zero on zero. That means that, you know, the the point kind of is a trap now. You know, once you've captured it and the, the point starts to, you know, the, the little bar comes up to capture, the capture point has to capture in order for it to flip. So you can just kind of get yourself into a nice little hiding spot a little, a little ways away from the capture point. And when you start to see it flip, jump down on them and kill them. Because you know, you're going to know exactly where they are. Take it a step farther. I mean, we could go defend the territory ourselves. And then the second that they're all waiting there on their waypoint for the cap, all 50 of them, we just come plowing through and rescue and wipe 40 people. Exactly. It's, you know, it, the capture point is not to be stood on anymore, is basically what I'm saying. It's to be defended. And that's how the game was supposed to be, and that's how it's, it's now. It, I think they did a good job with that. Uh, 
don't stand on the point is basically what I'm saying. Is my point is don't stand on the point anymore. Stay with the platoon lead, but have yeah. one or two, maybe three guys out. You know, once the fight starts dying down and you know you're getting it, just have one or two guys go, hey, I'm going to go look for a fight. And just go find, you know, where there's either a group waiting on a cap or a giant armor column pushing in a field and call it out. Volunteer, man. Yeah, we get that. we take volunteers. If, like that, that's actually kind of what I, I would I would recommend. Like, and if you are going to go out, like if you know for a fact that there are six other people going out to do it, make sure you ask first um, before to go you go out because we do need to maintain some numbers, and that'll be a good way for us to keep numbers on on the objective and to find another fight. Anyone else have uh, something they wanted to add or ask? Uh, yeah, Fox Reinhold. Um, yeah, keeping the statistics. The statistics are going up. I was going to recommend, I posted this on the forum. That um, little tool right there. If we could sign up for that, I think, I'm pretty sure it's free. That will help us keep track of which one of our platoon members are actually... I mean, that's another user, uh, but that would help us keep track of who is actually joining our TeamSpeak servers, because we're getting these members in, and the one thing we've really been stressing is getting quality members in. Well, if they're not joining our TeamSpeak server, they're probably not joining our platoons, um, and what we can do is we could use a tool like this if we can, you know, get GoSheets to accept it, obviously it's his server, he can do whatever he want, to... If we see someone not logging in, but we know they've been in game, we can send them a friendly little reminder. Be like, hey, you know, we noticed you haven't been in TeamSpeak. Um, is, is something up? Can, do you need help with something? You know, not be like jerks about it, but be like, you know, why aren't you in TeamSpeak like you're supposed to be? What? <laughs> I'm not on TeamSpeak? We'll talk. We'll talk to uh, Ghost about that. But at the same time, you know, if you are, you know, you're playing in the platoon, stop in Teamspeak. When you get online, I normally get in Teamspeak before I get in the game. I see who's in Teamspeak to see if I'm gonna even log into the game. I know, right? <laughs> Does anyone else have something they wanted to ask or add? I got something. Um, so are we officially reactivating the uh, recruitment platoons then? What do you mean? We're, we're, we're recruiting as, op we do open platoon if, yeah, it should be open platoon whenever. <gasps> oh, sorry, I just burped. It should be open platoon whenever. Um, recruiters are there. We'll run NNG only during structured ops times. I mean, we could have, I guess, one squad open if we wanted. I mean, as a second okay. group to move around if we wanted. If someone wants to play that role. Yeah, if it gets full, we can always start a second platoon or start a second, uh, or just make one of the squads NNG only. Does anyone else have anything they want to ask or bring up? Um, for the Battle Sunder strategy, um, what kind of chassis do you guys want? Racer. I like Racer a lot. Fast Sunder is a good Sunder, and the acceleration, uh, it's pretty awesome. You can, you can dodge a rocket pretty easily. Um, it's your choice, though, ultimately. I suggest Racer just because a Fast Sunder is a good Sunder. Although the traction that you gain from the rival is pretty decent, but it allow you to go up good hills and not slide as much. Mm -hmm. 
Also, I was wondering, um, is there details about, like, um, coordinating between the four Sunders that you were talking about? Because, like, for example, like, what happens if, like, two persons pull the AMS Sunder, or, like, all four of the people pull the AMS? Like, you're going to have a system to work out, like, who's pulling what kind of Sunder, right? Yeah, yeah, we definitely are going to have to have a system like that where it's it's going to be a little bit more designated gameplay where we're going to have like one person for maybe the next two or however many, you know, maybe hour or two is going to be pulling that repair sunderer. And then for the next hour or two, this person is going to be gunning for this sunderer. The next hour or two, this person is going to be playing the heavy assault in this sunderer. It's going to be a little bit more designated gameplay, but it's going to be a fun a fun style of gameplay. Be like an assigned role, so like as people come on and off, it'll be one person's job. Cool. Or if you don't that's even good. want to run with the battle bus line, you can just be a part of the main force that's going along, because the battle bus line is going to be like supplementary to a giant battle, almost. Or okay. you can grab a wraith flash and assist the battle Sundays. <laughs> yeah, wraith or radar flashes, flash. Wraith or radar flashes will do well. Yeah. Okay, User you. joined your channel. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions or comments about NNG? Oh, I just had a question. Uh, new pistols. Do you guys have a consensus that you like? Commissioner. Commissioner. Boss? Commissioner's the fucking hand cannon. I I'm going to speak up for the minority awesome. opinion. The snub nose is an incredible sidearm. the The commissioner is like, commissioner is in a, like what the thing that makes people like it so much is that it's almost a primary. Like, and and if you're running with a shotgun or like some other close range gun SMG, like it makes a very good second primary, right? And and it's you know like no other pistol can do that. The snub nose though is a lot like our older pistol but better. Like it's an amazing. Oh shit! I ran out of ammo. I gotta swap and kill a guy. Gun. All right. Well, thanks for the input. The swap time faster on the snub nose. Yeah. Well, I think the swap time is the same, but what, like the real difference is the recoil. It's got like zero recoil on a hip fire. Like a really good laser sight accuracy. So you can like you, you can you can unload all six shots very accurately. It has like lower recoil, faster rate of fire, and it's like the same shot to kill. So Well it's significantly assemble. lower damage. You do you do notice the damage hit on it. I thought I thought they both take the same number of shots. User to kill. joined your channel. No. It's no. the uh, the um underboss is uh significantly lower in damage. It just fires a lot quicker. Yeah, it's it's generally one more shot to kill anything. You gotta remember, um, too, that the farther you are away with that gun, its damage drop off is pretty. It it dies pretty quickly, so it's really only good in close to close medium range. The uh, long range, longer ranges, is not really it's effective. Anything else? Anyone had any questions or comments about NNG? When's the bacon camel coming? Bacon camel. Soon enough. It better. Higby needs to get on that shit. Does anyone know when the next uh, double station cache is? Probably next holiday. Apparently it's July the 4th, they said. Alright. Good shit, guys. Remember, NNG will be going MLG when it comes out, so keep a good eye on that. And if you're thinking about it, send me a message, and uh, we'll chit-chat. there's no one else that has anything else they want to say, I'm going to end the meeting. Do, do, you, have a, like, do, do you have a lot of de details about MLG, or you're pretty much like everybody else, and uh, we're in the dark about MLG? All I know is that it's seeming like it's going to be a 48 versus 48 man island instance going where there's going to be a tower and a few capture points and user uh, disconnected from your channel something along the lines of it's got to be outfit versus outfit and there's going to be certain only certain outfits are going to be able to compete due to some specific rating or something like that 
But it, uh, all I know is stuff that's been put out on planetsideuniverse.com. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a fucking blast. So we're definitely going to be, you know, I'm not worried about being allowed to be in there because of our ranking. You know, the number one spot is pretty good. So <laughs> well, I think we'll be all set with that. So if you're interested in getting involved in that, you know, it's we're forming a team that's going to be pretty pretty serious because uh, to be the best, you know, it's got to be serious. And we're going to be winning some money, possibly, off of MLG. Where can I check out outfit rankings? Uh, Planetside Universe or OutfitPoints.com. They both have leaderboards. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to end this.